everyone. Um, my name is Simone McGurk. I'm the state member for Fremantle, but I'm also uh, a minister in the uh, state Labor government. I have responsibility for um, community services and child protection, prevention of domestic violence, as well as women's interests. So uh, the uh, efforts of the Help the Homeless uh, Art Auction organised by the Seroptimists are very dear to my heart. And uh, I'm very glad to be supporting uh, the launch of the um, of the auction today, even in its uh, in these very novel uh, means that we have, uh, can I start by uh, acknowledging the traditional owners, the Wajak Noongar people in Fremantle, of course, that's in uh, Walila, and uh, and acknowledge um, their the traditional owners, and um, also I guess as uh, we concentrate on the need um, internationally for improved outcomes. Um, in many areas of life for black people around the world, but in the Black Lives Matter movement, um, I think that's an important acknowledgement that we still have a long way to go for our own First Nations people. Can I also thank uh, Brad Pettit, the Mayor of Fremantle, for participating uh, in this um, auction as he does, uh, as he has done for many years, and also Roseanne Thomas, the coordinator of Seroptimus International Fremantle. Uh, uh, Lynn Tichiro, uh, curator of um, Artist Chronicle. Thanks very much, Lynn, for your work. And the three organisations um, who help uh, do some of the um, important community um, work uh, that really is the glue that uh, holds us together here, particularly in relation to some of our vulnerable people. So we've got Michael Pugh from St Pat's Community Support Centre, Stuart Tomlinson from Multicultural Futures and Tarina Grace, from Black Swan Health, um, who are responsible for the street doctor. Uh, in the portfolio responsibilities that I've got, that I mentioned earlier, uh, I have also responsibility for coordinating the state government's uh, response to homelessness. And I'm very proud that uh, late last year, we were able to announce a $72 million injection of new funds to do two things. One is to build two common grounds for the metropolitan area. Um, these are large, usually about 100 self-contained units designed specifically for people who are homeless and to provide um, social support, uh, so social housing support for others uh, that have been very successful in other states. Uh, and the other part of the funding um, component of that $72 million will be a housing first approach uh, the evidence shows us that if we can get the bringing together of the rights of permanent accommodation, stable to, um, permanent accommodation for people, as well as the right sort of report supports, uh, in fact, we get very good outcomes um, for um, for people who are homeless um, and uh, and experiencing chronic uh, homelessness. So I'm very proud that we've been able to. I get that funding commitment and we're just starting to roll that out. Uh, of course, as um, we have all gone through the uh, pandemic over the last couple of months, we've seen some of those people really um, exposed and very vulnerable. And it's likely that not only were their services and some of the philanthropic dollars that, that, that those homeless people and the organisations that service them rely on um, come under pressure, um, but it's likely that we'll see more people um, be pushed to homelessness or um, very at least precarious housing situations as a result of the financial pressures associated with the um, with the pandemic. So there's a whole lot of reasons why we need to not only put more effort in, but a, um, a more coordinated, evident, coordinated and evidence based uh, eff effort in relation to homelessness. And I'm really um, pleased to be working with. Um, certainly St Pat's is one of those organisations that's doing some of that great work now. Uh, I, um, I'm sitting here in my ministerial office and just over my shoulder here is um, one of the uh, uh, pieces of art that I bought uh, a couple of years ago at the auction and, uh, and um, some people might recognise that seat. It's a bit far away but it's a, a seat that's in Fremantle where um, I sort of captured the um, someone uh, who is homeless and and uh, and um, it, it's it's a beautiful photograph. So I'm very glad and uh, to have supported the auction in past years, uh, and um, and urge you all to do the same. Uh, 
through, um, as I said, this novel means, virtual means. Uh, I think what I would particularly like to encourage is you to go off and make sure that you have a glass of wine and perhaps some um, crackers and cheese and then um, have a second glass of wine before you get uh, into the bidding process because that just sort of helps uh, get your enthusiasm, um, get your enthusiastic juices going. Uh, so thanks again to the Seroptimists who for a long time have been doing good work around the world but I know for the Fremantle Seroptimists in particular, um, fantastic group of women who um, provide their, um, their um, on a voluntary basis, their expertise and their passion to see better outcomes for some of um, the more vulnerable members of our community. Um, so thanks very much to the Seroptimus. So thanks again, everyone, um, for participating. Um, uh, bid often and bid high and enjoy that glass of wine. All the best.